Coming up, are the government's plans to make Britain the world crypto hub a route back to the top of finance and innovation? We are on the money with on-chain analysis and we are having it with Aave, our coin of the week. Hello and welcome to the show. As always, give us a like, add your comments and subscribe. Joining me this week, as always, from Canada, it's John Doe and from Austin, Texas, our Bitcoin miner extraordinaire, JP Barrick. Welcome to the show, guys. Woo. Okay, the big news is the government's plans to make the UK a crypto asset technology hub, which would include regulating stable coins and making it uh, a real center of investment and innovation. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, it's funny because just last week or so, weren't they banning, they weren't authorizing unhosted wallets or something in the, in the EU? The EU, so. yeah. The EU's yeah. just done that, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's like every country wants to be a crypto hub right now. We got Canada wants mining. We got the US. We got everything happening in Europe. We got Dubai. So it is interesting to see everybody wanting to be on board with that. So it's kind of like it is a competition. It's more of who's going to really regulate it and make the rules fair. That's what's going to be the most important part. And I think those fair rules are going to drive developers, communities, companies to the regulation that's best for them. You know, first they fight you. Now they're embracing us. But the fact is, is like Miami's competing. New York's competing. There's so many top tier cities out here looking to be the next crypto hub. What's going to distinguish them? Great regulation that's clear, concise and makes sense for the people building in this space. Yeah, for sure. The other funny aspect of this story was um, our chancellor, Rishi Sunak. Uh, announced that the Royal Mint, funnily enough, was going to have a government-backed NFT. I don't know if you saw this. He got slightly slammed on Twitter for it. Uh, I think we've got a couple of posts as well, which were alluding to the fact that, you know, we're in a, an energy crisis with energy bills rising, the cost of living going through the roof, and our Chancellor thinks it's a good idea to start minting NFTs. Might have been the wrong move. But we will yeah. see. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the US, uh, Gary Gensler of the SEC has announced plans for more regulation to tackle scams and protect investors. Uh, JP, uh, you mentioned regulation a minute ago. What did you think? Have you seen this? Is this a good thing? So regulation can be a good thing when it's set up properly and it's not overbroad. My concern here is that Gensler thinks most crypto tokens are securities based on the Howey test and 1900s in the United States. This is a huge problem because he's going to come in and be like, everything's a security. If you don't have a broker dealer license, if you don't have this license, you can't trade them. There's need and protection for investors, but with blockchains, you don't need to ask permission. So the people that are doing scams are just going to use software that isn't compliant. And I think this regulation is probably going to slow down the utility that we can provide with NFTs, yeah. how well communities can be built and scaled, because you need to go through now this broker dealer to get your license to do this thing, which you could just do with a blockchain outside the US. So I hope this innovation is not stifled by the regulation that Gensler's proposing. When you have a case in the United States because you broke a law, it might take two or three years to get justice. With crypto, yeah. you have justice immediately, and that's the reason why I love blockchains. And that kind of leads us on to, you know, the next story, which was the Ronin Bridge hack. The, 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 the guys behind Axie Infinity, you know, 600 million was stolen. The perpetrators behind that then uploaded some of the money to FTX. Uh, an exchange where you have to go through a KYC process, so you have to provide your personal details, which seems baffling in itself that you stole this money and then don't understand the fact that you're yeah. going onto an exchange where you're going to identify yourself. Um, sort of slightly even more embarrassing after the series of things that that happened there. But um, you know, what what are your views on what happened and and I guess linked to regulation, how that might help stuff like this, uh, you know, not happen in the future. So the problem what, what here what happened is that it's just a technological issue. Like we have Bitfinex hacks. We've learned from this. You have to have a hot in a cold wallet. Why do you need six hundred million dollars on a bridge? Who's gonna bridge six hundred million dollars of your coin? So it's just like bad engineering. They built video games. They built a great gaming system. But building this bridge was, I think, almost like out of what they were prepared to do. And the fast fact that they grew so fast. Put, kind of hurt them. So they had this great idea, you know, we're going to build this bridge, it's going to be these different validators. But the problem was is they didn't have their hot and cold wallet set up properly. And that one little problem could help solve a massive hack from, let's say, a million dollar hack instead of a $600 million hack. Those are the self-regulation that we need in the industry and we should ask for. 
and that transparency from developers. They were definitely aware that it wasn't set up correctly and the fact that they moved some of the funds to FTX, it's like how easy was it for the person to have access to these funds and how long have they had access to these funds? Because if they were thinking, oh yeah, let me just send it to FTX and try to sell it there. It's well, like, that's the crazy thing. It makes thing. no sense. <laughs> they, made, they made the hack and I think they also shorted the market, but the market rallied in a week between they, when they shorted it. So the guy who hacked it, I believe, lost money on his short, like a ton of money because he got pushed out of his position because no one realized they were hacked. And so like he was like, yeah. I'm gonna short it, everyone's gonna, coin's gonna crash. Yeah. And then he lost yeah. money on his short. Like, how does that happen? <laughs> like, how is the community, like, like what? It's just an uh, almost yeah. hilarious string of maybe, errors and mishaps, isn't it? It's maybe, almost maybe unbelievable. You gave, maybe you would have gave it back if, it, if the short would have went good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Great stuff, chaps. That is the headlines from around the world this week. Now... It's time for a massive chart attack as we take a look at the markets. So the big news this week was the 19th millionth Bitcoin was mined, leaving just over 9.5% of the 21 million left to be mined over the next approximately 118 years. So what's the market been telling us this week? Well, it's been in accumulation mode, as we see by the glass node accumulation trend chart. This looks at the wider market and shows us the accumulation is happening, but by who? Well, it has been mainly shrimps, those with less than one Bitcoin, and whales, those with over a thousand, uh, as they've been heavily accumulating in the last two weeks. And of those whales, the Luna Foundation uh, has been in action. They are the group behind the Terra ecosystem and they've announced plans to buy Bitcoin and become the second largest holder behind Satoshi. John, over to you for the technical. Okay, let's go. So the weekly candle for Bitcoin from last week did break out and Bitcoin headed up here to test this $48,000 level that we we're looking at. And if we look back here, you can see that range one two three that is now a major resistance range all the way up to about fifty two thousand dollars now bitcoin is correcting from that weekly candle so we could see something uh retrace back down towards forty four thousand dollars but that's the range that we need to hold in terms of downside here on the weekly if not then we will see a head down towards forty thousand and potentially thirty five uh, to thirty seven thousand now here on the daily chart for bitcoin what is momentum looking like on the daily right up at that 48,000 is that 200 day moving average range. And as you can see here, we had a double bottom form and then a breakout testing resistance. So now we could see something like a cup and handle form where we do head up, test that resistance, consolidate sideways in a tight range before breaking out past above 48,000 to 50,000, flipping that 200 day moving average into a support finally. And if that happens, then we can possibly look for something like this where we had that run up in September. And if we do get that, then we will see Bitcoin head up to test that all time high range, with, which is only about 30% away. Now, this next bit puts the current in currency. It's time for our coin of the week. This week's coin is Ave. Aave is a leading crypto in the borrowing and lending space, and it's an evolving DeFi platform. It allows lending, borrowing, and interest without needing a middleman, of course. And since the protocol's version three upgrade, it has seen its expansion onto other blockchains such as Avax, uh, Polygon, FTM, to name a few. JP, what are your thoughts? You're a fan of Aave? I'm a fan of Aave. I use Aave regularly to lend against Bitcoin that we mine to pay power bills. And so it allowed, it opened up a credit market that wasn't there for uh, large crypto holders like ourselves, like myself and the company. So that helped us scale our business and kind of take more exposure or get more exposure on the Bitcoin as it rose to sixty to five thousand dollars a coin. We wouldn't have been able to do that without Aave. So it's been around. It's one of the OGs. It's uh, continued to improve its development and deployment and it has massive liquidity, billions and billions of dollars. People don't realize that, but when you talk to someone in finance, you're like, I can go get a 2% loan on stablecoin, which is effectively one to one dollar back. And I just put up some Bitcoin as collateral. And I never have to sell it, never have to get that tax exposure. Like that right there is value in the crypto space that you can't get anywhere else. 
Uh, we caught up with the Aave founder, Stanny, at the Buzzing Crypto Compare Conference in London recently, and we asked him what's next for Aave. I think for Aave, there's probably, um, uh, the, the, the scalable way is to figure out like cross-transactioning between different networks and doing it through the Aave pools to make it a bit efficient. And I think that's the most focused upon because Aave V3 has a feature called portals. So basically, every bridge can become, uh, that is whitelisted by the, the Aave governance, a port in a portal, and, and that way, uh, basically, um, uh, you can actually make cross-chain transactions more seamless. And that's, I think, uh, the next focus point for, for the Aave community. Yeah, so uh, great to hear from Stanny there at the conference, and, and obviously big plans ahead for Aave. Uh, the the cross-chain portability, being able to swap coins across chains, JP, um, big thing for you guys at the moment? Oh, it's huge. It's going to reduce the cost of transactions across the network, as he was mentioning, and it's going to make these almost like these gated blockchains where uh, Aave has permissioned all these other chains that are bridges and blockchains that they know are trustworthy, have great developers, and that's going to reduce the cost of every transaction on the system, which allow you to do things like the Twitter uh, messaging and Twitter tweets, I guess, on a decentralized blockchain, which we could not do that before. We didn't have enough throughput. We didn't have enough uh, space on the blockchain. Yeah, and I guess this is just the ongoing move to this interoperability between chains, right? That's all for now. A big thanks to JP and John. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and look out for our chat with JP about Bitcoin mining and much, much more in our Crypto God video. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye for now.